So, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. So, this monster called gender-based violence, what is it that is causing our men to beat our women, our ladies, our moms, our daughters? And what is causing our ladies also to beat our men because gender is a male or a female sex. The moment a young man and a lady meet, at that particular moment, life is very cozy. When a man is seducing a woman or a lady, everything is so nice and so enjoyable. Then they decide to move in together. Things are still okay, a few months. Some, within a few months, a lot starts happening within the family. Others, within a year or many other years to come, then violence starts. So the question is, what is the cause of all this? I believe that the challenge that we face is not a challenge that we get during the relationship that we have. There are different conflicts within a family. There are conflicts among children that a child and a child, a brother and a sister, brother and a brother, sister and a sister, fight between each other or among themselves. Then there's conflict between a parent and a child, or a child and a parent, which is also violence because of disagreements. Then there are conflicts that arise as a result of a husband and a wife. Then a family and the neighbors and the larger society. So when a man and a woman decides when they decide to get married, they move in together. Life becomes so cozy at the beginning, at their honeymoon stage in their marriage. Then after some time, there are reports that come out that these people cannot sustain their marriage. Something that was meant to be beautiful eventually comes down. As a result of that, it depends on how people react Violence comes in. When there's violence in it, you can find that it can lead to separation between the husband and the wife. It can also lead to divorce, which leaves children in a very devastated position, in a very disorganized situation. The moment a child is left in a disorganized situation, then you know that the problem starts from that particular point. Then thirdly, it also leads to death. Death that leaves our children as total orphans. So generally, you find that a husband and a wife enjoying marriage, challenges start coming in. When you are a man and you decide to get married, you must know there are different responsibilities that you must take as a man. Equally, as a lady, as a woman, you have to know that there are also responsibilities that you must take. The Bible says that a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall join his wife and the two shall become one. So I've chosen to deal with gender-based violence in a family, that is between husband and a wife. Then the same Bible says that a man should love the wife. Husbands, love your wives. And it advises wives to be submissive to their husbands. Wives, respect your husbands. As a man in a family, you must know that there are six things that you must do in a family. Number one, as the head of a family, you must invite God in your family. 
There are six P's that we will deal with. Number one P is prayers. Invite God in your family as a man. Pray together in the morning and in the evening as a family. That way, at least you will be enhancing communication between each other and also you will be inviting God to be the captain of your marriage. Number two, as a man, you must provide provision. You must provide in two different ways. First, provide financially, financial provision. As a man, you must provide for your family. And number two, provide emotionally, emotional provision. Sometimes, as a man, you provide financially and you think that you're doing everything in that house. But you are lacking the emotional provision that may bring temptation in a family. So you must provide emotional. Number three is protection. As a man, you must protect your family. That is your sole responsibility, to give proper security to your family. There are different types of securities that you must give. There is financial security that we talked about, provision. Then there's the security of the family, that the family feels safe under your leadership as a man, because your family will be headed where you lead them. So if you lead them in the wrong direction as a man, that family will automatically take the wrong direction. But if you lead them in the right direction, that family will take the right direction. Then the next P is purpose. What is your purpose in this marriage as a man and as a woman? What are your goals? What, are, what is the vision of this family? What is the mission of this family? What are the objectives of your family? Set short-term goals that you must achieve as a family, medium-term goals, and long-term goals that you must achieve as a family. Then play. Husband and wife. The Bible says that the only time that you should not give to each other is when you are praying and fasting for reason of prayer. So the wife should give to the husband. That body belongs to your husband. And as a husband, the body belongs to your wife. So therefore give freely because if you don't give temptations again may overcome then we come to what are the causes of conflicts within a family because i want us to treat the roots i want us to treat the cause of conflict causes of conflict within marriage let us not treat the symptoms most of the times we treat the symptoms you find that when a child is being brought up when a child has been left as an orphan, a child has, is being brought up by a single mom, a child is being brought up by a single dad, then there is a problem that is coming up. The child is growing as an empty person. Ladies and gentlemen, you have glasses in front of you. If that glass is empty and you try to drink an empty glass, what are you getting? Emptiness. So when a child is brought up, when a child is empty, because children learn by what they see, there is something that a father, a husband can give to a child, a father can give to a child that a wife cannot give to a child. And there is something that a wife can give to a child that the husband cannot give to the child. So the child should grow with both the parents. Anytime you separate, anytime you divorce, anytime a child is brought up in... in uh, as a total orphan, just know that the child will develop trauma. The child will be traumatized. As the child grows up, there is trauma. Why? Because as a husband and a wife, you are in marriage that was abusive. So the child did not see love. The child, a child, children learn by what they see, not what they hear. If they see love in marriage, they will give love. If they see violence in marriage, they will give violence. 
So therefore, as a wife, ensure that there is love in the family. As a husband, ensure that there is love in the family. So that the child can, can see love, hug each other, appreciate each other, do dinner together, spend time together. Presence is what is another P. Presence, be present as a man. Do not confuse Confuse presence with presence. We see presence and you are not present. Because if you are not present, your wife cannot date herself. Then you must also date. Let your children see that love, that environment. That can be created by you. But if they don't see, they grow up to become adults. The moment they are adults, they never saw love, they saw violence. They saw grief, they saw loneliness, they saw resentment, they saw unforgiving spirit. Then what do you expect in return? You expect that child to be a person who will be violent in the foreseeable future. In our prisons, close to around 80% of the prisoners were brought up in broken families. Broken families. And therefore, conflicts come from the following issues. Number one, conflicts come from background environment. That is what I've explained. How are you brought up from broken families? Then you grow having trauma. Number two, conflicts come from association. When you associate with people who are not the right people to be associated with, or friends who influence you because of undue influence, you may bring a lot of violence in relationships. For example, men, wameenda, kuchukua kinyuaji kidogo, then your friend tells you, and it's a common saying, that we were wezi kaliwa na bibi. And then your marriage was getting successful, but unambiwa we wezi kaliwa na bibi, usikaliwe na bibi kama mwanamuke. Then you go home, now you want to be a man. Being a man to you is by showing your woman, your muscles, or ego. Let me tell you, Boloma, between, ladies and gentlemen, when a woman sits on you as a man, ukaliwa na mwanamuke, and when a fellow man sits on you as a fellow man, gani unasikia otamu? When a woman sits on you, unasikia vizuri. But when a man sits on you, that is a different thing altogether, right? Going raw and down to it. Then again, Conflicts come from generational issues, generational curses. These issues must be resolved. Generationally, your, grand, your great grandfather, your grandfather, your relatives, were, their marriages were never successful because of generational curses, so it catches up with you. Another thing is thing. You take an oath. Another thing is unresolved conflict. Unresolved conflict in the family. These are also brought by their financial issues within a family. Husbands and wives, ladies and gentlemen. Issues, finances, brings a lot of challenges within a family. And the first thing that it does is that there will be no agreement within the family by the end of the month. So how do you cure this? As a husband, as a wife, make your work easy. As a husband, your work is to provide. Number one, write, tell your wife to write a list of what she needs in a family. Because sometimes you start fighting after a week because kitungu aijanululiwa. Nyanya aijanululiwa. Wewe mwenye unaona umayakewa pressure, Come a husband, you don't know how to solve this, you respond with violence. So tell your wife to write a list of what you need within a month, then sort it out. 
every end month. If there is no money, your wife should understand. In some marriages, the wife earns more than the husband. As a wife, also understand, if your husband has no job, just provide, because he has no job. But with time, he may get a job, then it will be his responsibility to solve. I also understand that in a family, money to a woman is a money. Man's money is our money. So a man must understand that very, very well. Then as a man, also know that every end month, your wife should be going to the salon. She can't be doing coffee. She can't be meeting friends. If you have something small every end month, mkatiye kidogo, so that wana umewengine, our party an opportunity to please with those gifts, monetary gifts. So mweke kwa kinini kidogo, unampatianga pesa kidogo every end month, anaeza fanya nazo vitu zake, anaeza weka airtime, kiwa na gari, anaeza weka fuel, kama ana, anaeza chukua uba ama matatu. That is how life should be. And wives, if the husband is lacking, you should also understand your husband. Yeye pia kama ana, you can also provide kido. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we also have when there is grieving in the family. If there is grief, then there will be conflict. What causes grief? Loss of jobs, loss of businesses, will make you grieve. Relationship, if you lose a partner in a relationship, you will grieve. Death of a loved one. Physical emptiness, psychological emptiness. These are sources of conflicts. By conflict, I mean violence. Violence, gender-based violence. I'm still within the topic. What will bring a problem in your marriage in your family because family is a basic unit and family you should get everything from within a family love so what i'm discussing is what will bring conflicts within these families when there's that conflict it leads to gender-based violence automatically so now then what are the solutions to conflict management because we discuss what brings conflicts and how do you manage it? I think we are within the topic, right? <laughs> not unless you are not hanging on my lips. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, number one, deal with the issues immediately. If I were you, I would be having a pen and a pep. This is a very serious session. Because the moment you have these solutions, then you are guaranteed that at least you will avoid fighting your partner. You will avoid killing your partner, taking the life of your partner, separating or divorce. Right? Deal with the issue immediately. When the issue arises, deal with that issue immediately. Then at times you cannot resolve. If you see that you cannot resolve that issue, then time out. Do not proceed with it. Because you are not agreeing. Postpone it. Postpone the fights. Then you should not deal, number three, no dealing with issues when angry, when resentful, when stressed, when bitter, when emotional. Number four, then listen to your partner. When you listen more, you bring understanding. But when you just hear, hearing brings responding. When you listen, you will understand each other as partners. But when you just hear, you will be responding to your partner. So back and forth, you are bringing violence as you hear. Do not use full language. E.g. hata wewe ni mbaya. You know you are solving a conflict, but the first thing unaendea, wewe ni mbaya. Hata wewe ni mbaya. Already you've started on a high note. So when one partner goes high, the other one should go low. This involves husband and wife and also children, parents and children. Because these are different types of violence within a family. 
Then build a relationship bridge, not a wall. Do not build a wall. Build a bridge. Clarify issues before you answer. Ask your partner, help me understand. What did you mean? So that they can explain well. Then replace your why with what, when, which, who, how. Please clarify. Because the word why brings defense mechanism. Why did you do this? Why, why, why brings conflict, more conflict. Then do not use threatening language when discussing. Because it will bring violence. It will bring conflict. Then you must be able to forgive. Forgiveness is the only and it is the best antibiotic without any side effect. If you can't agree to forgive, my brother, my sister, ladies and gentlemen, you can't be forgiven. Then you are not ready to resolve. So learn to forgive. Then you have to know that bitterness is like swallowing poison and you want your partner to die. You are the one who feels bad every time you are bitter with a friend or a partner. Next, I'm almost finishing. Do not use words like you are useless in a marriage, in a family. You tell your partner you are useless. That is so wrong. You are hopeless. So wrong. You are foolish. So wrong. Instead, am I to say you don't understand me? So wrong. Instead, use positive words. Appreciate. Have positive attitude as you discuss. Then replace your normal and logical thinking with creative thinking. You must be creative as you think and as you resolve conflict. So, ladies and gentlemen, we know that if you feed grief, if you feed unforgiveness, if you feed fear, if you feed anger, if you feed anxiety, if you feed bitterness, if you feed rejection, if you feed resentment, if you feed misunderstanding, if you feed loneliness, if you feed isolation, then be sure that you will never be in a position to solve or resolve any conflict. I know each one of us here must be suffering from any of those that I have read. At least there's something you're feeling from within about another person. So gender-based violence has really caused us a lot as a society. It has brought down development. It has made us raise children who are half-baked in terms of being a full person because they lacked love in their years of growth. It has really brought a lot of sorrows, deaths, and we should find the cure. And some of the uh, solutions that I've just read, if you apply them, then we know we can come to an amicable solution and create an enabling environment for every Kenyan to be productive. Otherwise, I really want to thank you very much and God bless you all. Asante Nisana. Thank you.